Hey everyone, welcome to HomeRecordingMadeEasy.com and on behalf of Studio One Expert, I want to welcome you to the Beginner's Guide to Learning PreSonus Studio One Version 3. These videos are intended to help the absolute beginner, whether you're coming over from another DAW or whether this is the first experience you've ever had with a digital audio workstation. These short videos are intended to get you up and running in Studio One very quickly with no fuss and no muss. So in this video, we're going to take a look at creating our first song um, and we we will set that up right now. So let's take a look at uh, Studio One here. Right now we're on the start page as you can see. And uh, to create a new song, we could do that in a couple of different ways. Um, we can come over to the create new song uh, t uh, um, tab here. And we can just click on that, or we can come up to the um, uh, song button over here in the top right hand corner. So either one will get us to the same place. So if we click click on song, we're going to get the new song dialog box. We can click cancel, or we can come over to create a new song, and we're going to get the new song dialog box. And there's a couple of things we want to take a look at here. So we have three tabs here, styles, interfaces, and user. In the Styles tab, PreSonus has gone ahead and has created a bunch of uh, templates uh, for you to use, which will uh, help you um, set up your first song um, really easily, where all the routing is going to be done for you, all the tracks are going to be added, everything is going to be kind of set up in a way that makes it really simple. And they're done by styles. Uh, different things like band recording, 16 track band recording, house and techno, instrument set, so on and so forth. And you can see a whole list of them here. So I urge you to check out a couple of these templates so you can see what PreSonus has already done. And then maybe what you can do is modify that template and save it as a user template, which I'm going to show you in future videos. In the center tab here, this is the interfaces tab. And if you're using one of PreSonus's uh, in audio interfaces, you can choose it from this list. And what that's going to do, it's going to go ahead and it's going to set up all the routing, the inputs and the outputs, all the headphone mixes and all the other um, things that are related to that. So again, it just helps you speed up your workflow um, by choosing one of the um, audio interface templates if you're using a PreSonus interface. And then lastly, over in the Users tab, this is where you're going to be able to save some customized templates of your own, which I'll show you how to do in a future video. As you can see, I have one here called Mixing Template 2016. And again, all my um, busing system, my effects channels, uh, tracks, uh, plugins, all my in and out, my routing in and out of my audio interface is already pre-done in a template. So every time I open up a new song, if I'm going to be mixing a new, a new track for a client, all that stuff is already done and I can just import my audio files and get right to work. And again, I'll show you how to do that in a future video. But for this video, we're going to create a new song. Um, just as I want to show you how to build it from scratch. So we're going to click on new song and the empty song, or I should call it empty song, is at the top of every one of these tabs. It's, a it's at the top of the users uh, tab. It's at the top of the interface tab and it's at the top of the styles tab. So empty song is what we're going to create and we're going to do it from scratch. If we head over here to the right hand side, we're going to be able to uh, name our song here, our song title, and it's going to default to the name of the person that the software is registered to in today's date. We're just going to double click in there and I'm going to call this test song for this example. Okay. And then underneath that, it's going to ask you, where do you want to put this out on your hard drive? And we're going to go ahead and click this little gray button. And we're going to get a dialog box here and we're going to say, where do we want to put this new song file? So what I would suggest you do is you create a new folder. And for this example, we're going to put it out on my desktop. We're going to create a new folder and we're going to call it uh, studio one test. Studio one test, hit create. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to click open. And what that's going to do, it's going to put all the, um, the Studio One song file and all the related files to our recording session in that directory. So now that we've chose the name of the, the song and we chose um, where we want to put it on our hard drive, we have some choices to us underneath here. The first one is the sample rate. And again, we're going to dig more deeply into these in future videos. Uh, but here you can drop down this little drop down box. And depending on your audio interface will depend on what choices you have here. Typically, I'm going to keep it at a 44.1 default. Um, you can always uh, go up to 48, 88, 96, 176, 192 if you choose to, depending on your interface. But just keep in mind that the higher the resolution, the larger the file sizes are going to be, which means you're going to cut down and use up more hard drive space. And again, we'll talk about that more in depth in future videos. But for now, we're just going to keep it at 44.1. We had the resolution, we can be a 24-bit, 32-bit, or 16-flow. I just normally keep it on 24-bit. 
time base, this is where we're going to be able to uh, set up how we want our timeline to read in the edit screen, which we'll look at uh, in a second. It defaults to seconds, but you can also have it read in samples, or you can have it read in bars, or you can have it read in frames if you're working with video. And again, I'll show you that in a second what, where that's kind of located. Uh, we're just going to keep it on seconds. Now the song length, um, again, depending on what the last song you had open, uh, whatever time, uh, however long that song was, that's what it's going to kind of default to here. Again, I just kind of leave that alone. Whatever the default is, I kind of leave it. Um, if you know the length of the song, you can type it in here. If not, you can just leave it. Um, and then the tempo as well, um, it defaults to 120 beats a minute. If you know what the tempo of your song is going to be, you can always type it in here. And you can also then double click in here and do the time signature. But for now, we're going to leave it at 4-4 time. But what's super important is this box down here, the stretch audio files to song tempo. I normally leave this unchecked. And I'll say that again, I normally leave it unchecked. If you were to check off this box, what that's gonna do is if you are importing audio into this empty song file that we're creating, let's say you're mixing a song for a friend or for a client, and they're gonna send you a bunch of WAV files or MP3 files. And let's say those WAV files and MP3 files were mixed out and rendered um, at say uh, 90 beats per minute. Okay, and then you import them into your Studio One session here into this new song file that we're going to create. And if the tempo is at 120 beats a minute and we check this box, what that's going to do is Studio One is going to take those files you're importing into the song that were at 90 beats a minute for this example, and it's going to speed them up to 120 beats a minute. It's going to stretch the audio file. We don't want to do that. So unless you absolutely know what the tempo is going to be and you can set it to the proper tempo, be aware that if you bring in those audio files, whatever tempo that those were at when they were sent to you, it's going to try to stretch it to the tempo that you have here. I hope that makes sense. So I leave this unchecked for that reason, okay? And then play overlaps I leave unchecked. Okay, so once we have all that kind of set up, we could go ahead and we can uh, click OK. And what that's going to do, it's going to open up our empty song screen. So as you can see, there are no tracks, there's no audio, there's no nothing. This is a blank song file. Okay, so that's how you create uh, an empty song file here. Um, and let me just show you a couple of things before we end this video. So the first thing I wanna show you is that we talked about the timeline and we said uh, in the start screen, where, oh, excuse me, where we went over and we set up our new song file, we, um, it said we can default it to seconds, to frames, to bars. Um, and where that, that, where, that, um, where that shows is right here in the timeline. You can see right now it's in seconds. If I were to right click on the timeline and go to time base, I can have it read in samples. Right click again. Or in bars. Or in frames. Okay, so I usually leave it defaulted to, second, to seconds, minutes and seconds, but you can do whatever you want. Um, the other thing, the length of the song, remember when it was set to a two minute default? What that relates to is if you click this little flag up here, the open marker track, I call it the marker flag, you click on that, it opens up this marker track here. And you see we have a start um, flag here or marker. And if I zoom in or zoom out, excuse me, we have an end marker at the two minute mark. That's because in the when we created the new song where it said the song duration, we typed in or left it at two minutes. If we would have made that a minute, the end flag would have been over here at one minute and we would have had the start at zero and the end at one minute. And I'm gonna show you in future videos what these start and end markers are for. They're extremely important for when we're ex exporting our song and exporting stems and things of that nature. But just be aware that that's what that does. When you put the song duration, it's gonna preset where the start and the end flag are on the timeline. So I hope this video was helpful. Be sure to check back to homerecordingmadeeasy.com and studio1expert.com as we're gonna be adding more videos to this series. And uh, until next time, this has been David with homerecordingmadeeasy.com. Join me for the next video and I will speak to you all soon. Take care.